Hi, everybody. This is Shada, and it's a pleasure to be here with you tonight. Um, I'm excited to share with you guys six recipes that uh, between me and Mauricio we've come up with uh, for your holiday cooking for this year. Um, I know a lot of you guys panic as to what are we going to make, what are we going to make, but really don't panic. It's all good. Uh, we are all here to help you out and with some delicious recipes. And um, if you're following along um, with your recipe packet, I am making, I'm starting to, with the first recipe, which is a delicious roasted Brussels sprouts and butternut squash. So what I have done is I've taken the Brussels sprouts, washed them, and I've sliced them in half, and I've taken butternut squash and cubed them. And as you can see from here, I've gone ahead and mixed the two, and I've already started mixing it with the orange juice and uh, lemon juice because I wanted to go, I want the flavors to get in there. So they've been soaking in here together for about 30 minutes. What I'm going to add next to that is red onions. And I'm also going to add fresh cranberries because what would a holiday meal be without fresh cranberries, right? So we're gonna mix all this together because I want the juice to get in for everything. Look up. You know, one thing I have to say about our food, our food looks really, really pretty. So now that I've mixed everything together, um, now I'm gonna add the seasoning to this. Now the seasoning that you wanna add to this is a couple of things. If there's a salt-free seasoning that you like, um, absolutely go ahead and, and put it on there. Um, I have two options here. I have here a lemon pepper seasoning the only thing I ask you guys is when you're reading, when you're buying um, spices, make sure you read the ingredients. Um, what happened to me was I bought a lemon pepper from one of the local markets, and I just seriously thought it was just lemons and peppers and whatnot. Come to find out, they added sugar to it. So I went online, and there's a company called Frontier, and I ended up finding this lemon pepper seasoning that is salt-free and it's also sugar-free. The other seasoning that I like is called citrus pepper seasoning, and that's by Savory Spice, where you can find that online. So I'm going to do a little mixture of both, and I'm not really measuring. I'm just like adding it, you know, tossing it in there. And the lemon pepper has a little kick to it, which I kind of like the little kick. It's got, a little, I think, a little bit of cayenne in there. And what we're going to do is we're going to mix this really well because I want the spices to go everywhere. Doesn't this look pretty? I know I keep saying it looks pretty, but it really does. <laughs> As I'm talking to myself. Anyway, so here we are with our, with our dish that I'm going to now put in the oven. We're going to cover it with aluminum foil and put it in the oven. Now the reason that I'm putting a cover on there is because when you're when you cook um, cranberries, they start to pot. And if you don't have a cover for it, they're gonna make an absolute mess, especially in your oven. And I'm pretty anal and I want my oven clean, so I'd rather when it pops and it spreads that it happens against this. So I'll be back. I'm gonna take this and put it in the oven and then I'll be back to show you what the finished product looks like. For my next recipe, this, this recipe was inspired by a dear friend of mine, Erin, who truly, I, I owe her a lot of debt of gratitude because she helps me out. She's my camera girl for my webinars. She helps me with my uh, Facebook Lives. She's just an all around awesome person. And I know she likes things on the spicy side. Like with Erin, you can, you know, you can, I say it's spicy and she's like, uh, no, it's not spicy. So for her, it has to be really spicy. So what I did is I decided to create a, a spicy cranberry relish that she could have at Thanksgiving. Um, and this we have, we're gonna put everything, we have fresh cranberries that we're gonna put in here. We have one small red onion that we're putting in here. We're gonna, I'm gonna add some dates to this because we're gonna, I'm gonna want it to be a little um, sweet and spicy. So, and if you don't want the dates in here, you guys, you don't have to, but just know that it'll be spicier. And um, I'm gonna add the zest. I know I, I wrote on the on the recipes that you could do this in steps, but it's okay, because this, 
uh, cranberry relish is supposed to be chunky. So we're going to add two oranges that I've cut up. We're also going to add some mint. Mint makes everything just so delicious. We'll add some mint in there. We're going to add some lemon juice. And I forgot already how much lemon juice I told you guys, but that looks about right. What do you think, guys? Yeah, I think that looks good. Now, for my Aaron, we are going to add, let's see, a quarter teaspoon, which probably she would say that is not enough, but you know what? We're going to try, we're going to start with a quarter teaspoon and um, let's see how it goes. You can all start out small because you can always add. And if you add too much, we can't take it away. So it's better for you guys to go, you know, start with a little bit and see what happens. And this is a jalapeno chili powder that I got on Amazon. And I really do put this in on almost everything. And if you go to my healthy cooking page with Shada, I have an Amazon affiliate link where I put all my favorites. And you're gonna find a lot of the stuff that I'm using today, you're gonna to find it on there. I've made, I've tried to make it easier for you guys to find and buy. So, excuse the noise. We're gonna start this. Now, you can make this smooth or you could make it chunky. I kind of like it a little on the chunky side. So I'm going to pulse this a little, a few more times and see how it goes. Because I don't want it too smooth. And the other thing with this, you guys, um, after you make this, I really recommend that you make this the night before because the longer it sits, the more the flavors will come together and it'll taste better. looks pretty good yeah that looks pretty good I'm gonna taste it to see if it's spicy enough because I know Aaron will say it's not spicy oh yeah for me it's got a little bit of a kick it's got a little bit of the sour and it's got a little bit of the sweet so it's really good but I know for Aaron it's gonna to have to be kicked up to probably a half a teaspoon, but it's all good, you guys. Keep it at a quarter, and then keep adding more if you if if you like. Um, oh my God, this turned out really good. So I hope you enjoy it at your Thanksgiving table. Let me put it in a nicer dish because presentation is everything, right? I want you guys to see it. Oh, look at the colors. Too bad none of you guys are here right now, so you can be eating this with me. There are so many different ways to make cranberry relish. And lately, I really like the raw version. So here is the finished product. I hope you make this and I hope you will enjoy it. For our next recipe, I am going to be making you a delicious wild rice and pomegranate salad. I wanted to show you guys my Holland bowl. Um, this is where I chop all my salads and, and do everything with uh, a little or ulu, ulu. So a lot, a lot of what I'm using today is what's called a 50-50 blend. And what it is is baby lettuce and baby spinach. I really like this mixture. I got it at Whole Foods. Oh, no, I got it at Sprouts. My apologies. And it's called the 50-50 blend, and it's just really nice. Now, I don't pers personally, I don't like my lettuce this big. This is why I've chosen to chop it up. And I wanted to show you guys how I chop it up. I'm not going to chop it up really fine. 
but just enough so that it's going to make it easier to eat. And it really, it, it, this is a simple thing to do, but you do need like a somewhat of a wooden bowl to do it in. Because if you do it in plastic or metal, you're going to damage the blade of the ulu. And we don't want to do that. So I think just, there we go. And it kind of, you kind of can get your frustrations out if you're not in a good mood. And that's it. That's it. I think that's uh, fine, chopped fine enough. And it just made it a little bit smaller and it just makes it more easier to eat when you're eating a salad. You know, you go to restaurants and they give you these big chunks of salad and it's like, how the heck am I going to eat this? And you have to sit there for hours cutting it. And I wish that I, you know, had my stuff with me. So I've already gone ahead and made the wild rice for you guys. I made this in the instant pot. So the wild rice that I'm using is a one pound bag that I got at Trader Joe's. And I love this bag because it's completely measured out already. So what I do is I put the, I first cut it out, cut the rice out of here, put it in a colander. I wash the rice, and then I put this whole bag into my instant pot, and I add four cups of water, close the lid, close the seal, and there's a button on your instant pot that says multi-grain. Push that button and walk away. It's that simple to make wild rice. And in about 45 minutes, once it comes up to pressure, it'll take about 40, 45 minutes. And then you want to let the pressure come down naturally. So don't release the valve because the rice will be still pretty wet if you release the pressure. But if you let the pressure come down naturally, a lot of the water will be absorbed. So it, it will be completely fine. Now, we're going to take the salad and we're going to put everything into our bowl here. And we're going to add, what are we going to add to this? Parsley, which I've already gone ahead and chopped up. We're going to add some fresh mint. Mint is always really tasty in your salads. We're going to add some green onions, some scallions. Now, if you wanted to add red onion in here, you certainly could. Um, there is no right or wrong for this. We're going to add... Now, I know I wrote a yellow bell pepper, but when I went to go buy a yellow bell pepper, they weren't that good, so I ended up getting the red. I am going to add my favorite, as you guys all know, pomegranate seeds, thanks to my mom who did this. And we're also going to add roast, uh, actually, I steamed these butternut squash. Now, Trader Joe's sells them like this. I don't know if you can see it. They're already cut, and they're, they're in a pretty little shape. And I just thought that would be really wonderful. So I steamed this on the stovetop, and we're going to put it in our salad. And we are gently going to mix this. Now look how beautiful and colorful this salad is for the holidays. Now if you wanted to put grapes in here, you could. You wanted to put tangerines in here, you could. Um, you know, the recipes is just a roadmap for you guys. And make it your own. I'm going to go set up and start the dressing recipe. Now, the dressing that I'm about to make for you guys, it has sesame seeds, lime juice, orange juice, shallot. So this is a tri best, and I like using the tri best for this dressing because I can just make a little bit of a dressing anytime I want instead of making it in the Vitamix, um, which will be making a lot more. So for the next recipe, I will be using the Vitamix, but for right now, the tri best is really good. We're going to need um, half a cup of toasted sesame seeds. When you toast your seeds, it really brings out the flavor and it tastes so much better. So we're gonna put that in here. And we're gonna need a quarter cup of orange juice. And we wanna use fresh orange juice when, whenever possible.
Then we're going to use a quarter cup of lime juice. Now, if you wanted to use lemon, you certainly can. It doesn't have to be lime. We're going to add a small shallot in there. And we are going to do, I think, a half a cup of water, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, a half a cup of water. We're going to put the lid on. Oops, the wrong way. You want to make sure to do it long enough so that it comes out really smooth, that all the seeds are blended. Now, I got to tell you, the first time I made this dressing, I made it as a dip, and I barely put any water in here. And the dip was really good. Like if you make a nice crudite for the table with all your favorite vegetables, this made a really good dip that you could just dip your vegetables in there and just eat it. But if you want it as a salad dressing, you're going to need to add the water. So here it is. And that's our salad dressing for this salad. Now, I know there's going to be some of you guys that don't want to, that don't do the nuts and the seeds, and it's fine. You could substitute the sesame seeds for cannellini beans, but it will not give you that flavor of the toasted sesame seeds. Um, but you certainly can replace it with um, the cannellini beans. This salad does not need this particular dressing. You could put lime juice on this. You could actually orange, just plain. Orange juice would be fantastic on this salad. You could go to California Balsamics and use their balsamic. They have a pomegranate balsamic or whatever balsamic you like and it's your favorite recipe. You're more than welcome to use it on this on this salad. It all will taste fantastic. I hope you enjoy this recipe. So my dear friend, Chef Mauricio of True North, he could not be here with us tonight, but he did give me his recipe to make and I hope that I'm gonna make his recipe proud um, he did send us this wonderful mustard tuna salad that's absolutely delicious. When I go to True North, he does make this, and it's just fantastic. So we're going to start with four cups of cooked uh, garbanzo beans. You can make the garbanzo beans fresh in the Instant Pot yourself, or you could buy canned. It would be two cans of the 14.5 ounce, and you would just want to make sure that it's salt-free. And you want to make sure that you rinse it really good. And um, what I've done with this is you take your garbanzo beans and you put it in the food processor, fit it with an S blade, and you just want to pulse it. Because if you start to blend it, you're going to make it really smooth. And that's not the idea for this. You literally want it. See how it's just like flaky? This is how you want it. So don't make it smooth. Just pulse it about four or five times, um, and that's all, it, that's all it needs. Next, we're going to add three Roma tomatoes that have been chopped. I'm bringing it up closer that you guys can see. We're going to add it to here. This is a takeoff on a tuna salad, but I think this is by far better. We're going to add one chopped carrot. We're going to add celery that has been chopped. Again, look at our food. It's really appetizing and it's really colorful. Um, we're going to add one small red onion that have been chopped. Try to chop everything about the same size. You don't want to chop something really, really big and something really, really small. So you want to try to chop everything about the same size so it looks pretty. We are going to add some flat parsley to this. Now, if you want to add curly, you certainly can. 
And we're also going to add some shredded basil to this. Now, we're going to toss this all together. To make sure that it all gets incorporated. Uh, you could add some granulated dulse to this, and it would give it that little fishy, <laughs> fishy taste, but it's completely up to you. So I'll be back, and I'm going to show you how to make the dressing. For the no tuna salad dressing, we are going to be using a half a cup of the stone ground. This is a salt-free salt stone ground mustard that we are going to be using. So let's see. We're going to need a half a cup. There we go. Put that in there. So I just added the stone ground mustard. Now I'm going to be adding the yellow mustard. We're going to do about a half a cup of the yellow mustard. We are going to add a half a cup of uh, raw cashews. We are going to add a tablespoon of the granulated garlic. We are going to to be using a quarter of a teaspoon of black pepper. And two cups of water. Now you could use water or you could use broth, but I find that actually water tastes better. Oh, we're a little bit short. So, uh -huh. and once everything is in here, we are going to blend this until we get a smooth, uh, creamy texture. All right, this looks really good. I'm going to pass this off to my assistant. We are going to add this now to our salad. Look how rich and creamy that is. Now let's mix this because you may or may not want to add the whole thing to it. But this does absorb a lot of it. And you want it to be very mustardy. Now, when I personally, when I make this, I use gray poupon uh, just because it adds a little more, it's a little spicier. But this, his version is absolutely delicious. Let's add a little bit more. Oh, yeah. I wish you guys were here right now so you could smell this and you could try it. 
Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in the refrigerator and then I'm going to come back to you guys um, and show you all the finished products of all the dishes that we have made. This salad need, does need to sit for a little while. I think it tastes better when it's cold and it's, um, the flavors have had a chance to all really blend together and get together. So in about five minutes, I'll be back and we'll pick up right where we left off. Welcome back everyone to Erin's Thanksgiving. My dear friend Erin, uh, she inspired me to do this webinar for you guys. Um, two of the dishes are her inspiration actually, the spicy cranberry relish dish and the Brussels sprouts uh, butternut squash dish is also her inspiration. So I wanna thank her for that. And now I'd like to show you guys the final finished products of what's gonna be on our Thanksgiving table. We're gonna start out here with the Chuno that the recipe came from Chef Mauricio from True North. And here's some of the salad dressing that went on that. It's the, the mustard salad dressing. Next, we have my spicy cranberry relish. And the longer this sits, you guys, the tastier it will be. The flavors will blend. We have a beautiful pomegranate salad, and I've add, added some slivered almonds to the top. You don't have to do that. You can, but you don't have to. I think this was about a tablespoon. We have our salad dressing, and here we have the butternut squash, cranberries, and Brussels sprouts, onions that were soaked in orange juice and lime juice and some pepper seasoning. Thank you, everyone, for joining us this evening for this special edition of a holiday cooking class. I uh, just want to make an announcement to you that last week I did teach a holiday cooking class with Chef Mauricio from True North here at the house. We did film that class and that class will be available to you guys for you to register shortly. We will be getting that out to you soon and I hope that you will join us and learn some new and healthy ways of creating a magical dinner for yourself during the holiday season. Thank you again and have a wonderful night. Um, one of the recipes is uh, submitted by Gustavo. Oh, God. Bye bye, Gustavo. <laughs> That's a little spice. That's got to to it. You probably got doesn't have You're so funny. You go, hmm, this is really good. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to. Look, I created these recipes like yesterday. Yeah, so, okay. uh, hi, everybody. We're going to be. Wait, we're going to start over. I need to. Yeah. Um, <laughs>